So I'm going to talk about bad surfaces and how to fix them. And this is a good example because here I'm using a bump um, texture. You can kind of see that texture uh, that I've used for the material. And the texture I'm using right, right now uses the UV orientation of the surface. And what that means is if I show the point, you can see that some of the points are closer together. Some of them are further away from each other. And you can see that that controls uh, how wide the texture is or how close together uh, that texture is going to become. So it, it pretty much controls the width and the, the height of the texture. And it's really nice to use this type of, of texture because when, when your texture has issues, like right here, uh, you can clearly see that the texture is being kind of sucked into a single point. It's becoming linear instead of being more uh, more of a square texture. Um, and you can clearly see that that's because of the points. Uh, all of the points come to a single point in the middle. Um, and you can see that better if I show you the wireframe. Yeah, you can see right here you have a single point. And everywhere else you have four sides. So what happened here is we had a UV orientation. So we had square um, square edges to, to the UVs. And then suddenly right here, you have three sides to your UVs. So you broke one of the rules. Or in this particular case, your surface has one rule that's been uh, compromised. And, um, and so it breaks your, um, your texture. Uh, and so in some cases that would be okay, like for example if you want to 3D print a solid and it has one edge like this where it comes to a single point, then that's completely fine. But if you want to render it using a UV texture, which is very common, uh, using the UV texture is one of the best ways to, uh, to assign some, uh, some really nice shading to your, to your object. Um, and so if you wanted to do that, then you're going to run into this issue. Um, so we we would want to fix that, and I'm going to show you exactly how to fix that. Um, but one last thing I want to talk about before I show you some of the solutions to fix bad surfaces is uh, I want to show you the sphere. So if you type in sphere, this is going to create the default sphere in Rhino, and I'm going to go in and show the shaded, uh, the shaded version of it. Of a view. Oh, I already had a sphere right there. Um, but one thing you'll notice right away is that the sphere, the sphere points, they come to a single point, just like we saw right here. So, in a way, the default sphere is also a bad surface um, or a bad object because we have four sides here, and here we have three sides. You know, if we select these three points, they connect, which means the UV has been broken. Um, and sometimes that's okay, sometimes it's not. Like we covered here, if you wanted to 3D print the screwdriver hand-on, and same thing here, if you want to 3D print this sphere, it is going to work. But if you render it, you're certainly going to have some issues. Um, and I can try to do that too. I can go under Render, and if I assign the same material. So if I go down here and I say by object, and if I assign the same material I used for the screwdriver handle, there might be an issue at the top. And I guess there isn't much of an issue, but you can see that if you get close enough, uh, the texture does get sucked into the single point here, um, the center point of that surface. And so, it could be an issue sometimes. If it's small enough, like in that sphere, then you're not going to notice it as much. Uh, but it's always good to try to avoid degenerate surfaces or bad surfaces. Um, like I said before, there's different names for this type of surfaces. Um, we should call them bad surfaces because in Rhino, they're referred to as bad surfaces. Um, but so one of the ways you could fix this issue um, is by going on the, and we'll just cover this one. So I'll just select this and then hide everything else so that we can just focus on this one 
this one issue. Um, and so one of the ways you can fix it is you go from uh, a view that is flat to your CVs, just like that. And then in this case, it's like a revolve. Um, so what we can do is use a simple circle. Just make some kind of shape that you can use to cut your form. And then if you use the trim command, you can trim the inside. And right away you'll notice that uh, the issue we had before where everything was getting sucked in, that doesn't happen anymore. So if I do Control Z, you can see here it gets kind of pulled into that point. And if I do Edit Redo, oh. hmm. Okay, redo doesn't seem to work, but I can go back and trim the inner surface again, and you'll see right away. That uh, the texture issue does not happen anymore. Uh, the texture doesn't get um, sucked into that point anymore. Um, but if you look at the CVs, there's still a problem right there. The problem is not gone. Uh, it's just that you don't see it in the texture anymore. Um, and so one thing you could do here is you can, you know, I'm going to go under the shaded view so we can see it better, but uh, you can just make something like a planar surface. So you can just make a plane right here. And then if you press enter, it's going to create a flat, um, a flat plane. Uh, and so if you join both of these surfaces and then you go back in, and you assign the same material that we used, it should be much better. Um, it still has some, some strangeness happening right there. Um, and ideally, the way you would fix that is you would use a fillet instead of having a soft uh, surface edge like that. Because right now what we're, what we're getting here is we're getting a bunch of points that um, they just have very different spacing, and so it still creates that issue right there. Um, and if you really wanted to fix that, there is actually a feature that fixes it, and it's called Shrink Trimmed Surface. So I would just type it in, Shrink Trimmed Surface, and if you click on that, Right away, it's going to fix that. Uh, and the reason why it fixed it is because what it did is it took the point. Let's control Z. Let's go back and undo. And now I'm going to show the points. So we had this one point right there. And when we select the surface, I guess we cannot select the surface when the points are there. Um, but we could compare them. Uh, we could compare them by copying this to the side. Um, so if we compare this with the shrink trimmed surface, and if we look at the points, you can see that here it has a point at the center, and here it doesn't anymore. So what it does is it looks at the object wherever it is trimmed, and it shrinks all of the points that you don't need. So it's kind of like selecting all of these points here, and just using the delete. Yeah, if you delete everything. So it's kind of like doing that, but it does it automatically, and it makes everything looks really good. Um, so that's one of the ways that you could fix it uh, with automated features, and you can see here the bumps look really nice compared to before. Um, so that should fix most of the issues, and that's what I would recommend using.